I want to invite your attention this morning to the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 21. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. For some of you, you, you get to 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, and 2 Chronicles this morning from the Word of God. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Mennonites came in to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Tamar, that is, in Judah, alarmed Jehoshaphat, resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek God. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God who's in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague of famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, you will not judge them, for we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are fixed upon you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zacharias, son of Benaiah, and the son of Jael, the son of Maniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. Right. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the paths of Zeg, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jerel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord that the Lord will give you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from Kahasha and Korai stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with, very, with a very loud voice. In verse 20, early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa, 
As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah, people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Our Father and our God, even now, will you open our ears that we might hear you. We open our eyes all around us that we might see you. And may the beauty of your presence invade our hearts that we cannot stand it. To the ends that we lift our hands before you and give you praise and glory that is due to your name. God, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, God, for the privilege of coming to the house of prayer. We thank you, God, for allowing us once again to open up the book. Now, Lord, speak to our hearts. Speak to us, O oh God, that we might be your people and you might be our God. Let the people of God say together, amen. amen. Stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning to take your phones out and, and invite someone to worship this morning, to our second worship. You know, so often, so we don't do that on Sunday mornings, but I want you to take your phones out this morning. I'm talking about right now. I know you got your phones. Get your phones and invite your friends and invite them to worship at 6th Avenue. Come at 11 o'clock and join us and tell them to seek, stand still, hashtag, and see the salvation of the Lord. All right, all right. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I mean, you know, like I know, that life is not fair. It's not, is it? Some of you are dealing with some serious struggles. What do you do when life is throwing you some difficult curveballs? When your relationship with God is being affected. When you are worried, when you're afraid about the challenges are in your life, what do you do? When you're distressed, I believe the answer lies in the Word of God. I mean, listen, friends, have you ever felt like you've been at the end of the rope and you did not know what to do? I mean, challenge after challenge comes your way and it does not appear to be ending. What do you do? I just got off the phone not, a, not many hours ago with my dear friend and pastor that's away in another state. And six months ago, almost a year now, he's a very athletic pastor, young man of God, and he fell down playing basketball. And Charles injured his elbow. And, 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 and the blood was running so heavy, they, they carried him to the emergency room. But the long story is short is that by the time they got through working with him, he discovered that he had a rare cancer that's invading his body. And he said, Ro, I want you to know I did not know what to do. And they began to work with him, and, and, and they even did this new work of taking tissues out of his body and recreated tissues to, to put back into his body to restore that which was already happening in his body. And, and he said, I continue to cry out to God, God, will you help me? But not only Charles standing in the need of prayer. But do you not know that even today, after six months of not being in the pulpit, that that cancer has gone into remission? Amen. I've come to say to us today that we must stand still and see the salvation of God. I mean, can you imagine those around us that, that say, I need this? 
but I don't have the money. Our son is consumed with drugs, and, and we tried everything. Detox centers after one another. Support groups, friends, testimonies. He's a lost case, preacher. I've heard from those around me who said, Preacher, I've been looking for a job a long time, and I still don't have one. What do I do? Some of us must realize and understand that some of the common three words in our language is, Lord, help me. It is totally against our nature to stand still and to do nothing when we are facing difficult, isn't it? I mean, you know, I can remember going into the grocery store with my kids and, and I get up to the counter and I say, now stand still. And you know how kids are, they just fidgety and they just get to wiggling and I say, stand still. It's hard to do that at times in our lives. But I've come to remind us that God desires for all of us in times in our lives when the challenges are coming and going to stand still. Even preachers, pastors, Sunday school teachers, deacons and deaconess, and, 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 and all of us included among those that panic when God does not move on our timetable. We even try to help him. I mean, we're quick to proclaim, where are you when we need him? I mean, we almost act like we are in control. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, some of us, I mean, the the, the despair whispers, they show up. Give up! I mean, the cowardice cries from the inner being of who we are begin to say, retreat, go back, turn away. And then you are reminded that there are times when the haste cries come around that says, do something. You've got to do something and right now. Act quickly. I've come to say to you, friends, that I believe that God allows circumstances, trials and challenges and tests to come our way in order to teach us that there is no other God like him. We must remember that our help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth, the creator and the sustainer of who created life and breathed the breath of life in our living souls. Challenges and hardships come sometimes because we live in a broken world. Friends, stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What does it mean? What does it mean to stand still? I mean, to stand still means to just remain in place. I mean, spiritually, it means that we need to wait on God. We need to hear from God. Listen, friends, I mean, if we don't wait on God, God speaks through his word. God speaks through the Holy Spirit. God speaks through his people. When God speaks, we ought to be listening. So often in our lives, I mean, I say to people uh, oftentimes, what is God saying to you? I mean, really, what is God saying to his people? We are his sons and his daughters. He's our God. What is he saying to us? Next time you're with your friend, your brother, your sister, in the Lord Jesus Christ, ask them what God is saying to them. The psalmist declares in Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. God is saying, just be there, Roosevelt. Wait on me. The psalmist declares in Psalms 85, let me hear what God, the Lord, will speak. The psalmist knew in the depths of his heart that God will speak. What is God saying to us? I mean, the psalmist says in Psalm 4, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. He said, meditate, Roosevelt. Meditate on the Lord. I mean, I'm reminded today that our staff is doing this 21-day uh, fast deal. 
and, and, and our immediate staff, and, uh, and, 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 I, and I've been reminded in my time, my devotion with God, that I just need to be at all before God, wondering and seeing all the beauty of his presence all around me. Friends, I've come to remind you that, you know, you remember the story of, 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 of Moses and the Israelites. And, and, and Pharaoh and the Egyptians behind Moses and the Israelites. I mean, the desert were behind them. The Red Sea was in front of them. And Pharaoh desired to take Moses and the Israelites out. But the word of God said, fear not. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. I mean, you reminded, I'm reminded that, you know, when Elijah was hungry, I mean, Jezebel was running behind him to kill him. But he was hungry, and the Lord said, listen, just go over to the city of Zarephath. And there you'll find a woman who will make a little bread and have a little water, and she will feed you. He came upon the widow, and the widow said, he said, they said listen, the Lord has sent me to you. And the widow said, listen, I'm just out here getting a little few sticks together. And me and my son, we are going to eat and die. And he responded, widow, the Lord has sent me. He says, if you just go in and prepare me a little food, you will, your cupboard will never run dry. Friends, I've come to say to us today, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You remember when Jesus was on the boat? The storm arose, and the disciples did not know exactly what to do. They woke Jesus up and said, do you not care about us? Jesus says, absolutely I care. And he spoke to the wind, he spoke to the tall storm and said, peace, be still. Stand still, friends, and see the salvation of the Lord. I mean, what God tells Jehoshaphat in this passage of Scripture today and what he would remind us today is that the battle is not ours. It's God's. You don't have to fight the fight. God will. Jehoshaphat was afraid. He was scared. He did not know what to do. There was a mighty army coming up against him. Friends, and sometimes in this work at 6th Avenue, I feel like there's a mighty army coming up against me. You say, where? Where? All around here. <laughs> it exists sometimes among the people of God trying to take down the people of God. But listen, Jehoshaphat, he learned to call on God. You know what the word of God, Jeremiah 29, 13 says? He says, you will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. I mean, do you really want to know God? In the midst of challenges, in the midst of struggles, in the midst of your distress, you and I must seek God's face. We must get to know him. We must find ourselves standing still. Jehoshaphat prayed. He called on Jehovah God. Listen, you know, he recognized, he said, you are the God of our fathers. Adam, Abraham, Moses, David, you are the God of our fathers. He said, you live in heaven. You are almighty, you are holy, you are righteous, you are in the heaven, he declares. He says, aren't you not the ruler of all nations? God is sovereign, not just in America, not just in Africa, but to the ends of the world, God is sovereign. Think about your God today. Who is your God? Is he a little wimpy God? Is he a small God? Is he a big God? Who is your God? Is he mama's God? Is he granddaddy's God? Who is God for you? Everybody must know God, must develop that relationship with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
I mean, can he not do the impossible things in our lives? Will he make a way out of no way? Do you love him? Does he love you? You and I must recognize the fact that the way we perceive the God affects us how we respond to him. Listen, if you don't believe that he is the great I am, he won't be the great I am. If you don't believe that he can do almighty things, if you do not believe that he can do the impossible things, he won't do that in your life. Friends, I've come to say to you that the people of Judah called on God because they knew him. They trusted in him. The scripture says that all of Judah, all of Judah united in prayer. I mean, I'm reminded that all across the city of Birmingham, wouldn't it be great if Sixth Avenue would just gather together in prayer and pray for the things of Birmingham? Wouldn't it be not mighty? That people of God that gather together at 6th Avenue will come together and pray for the crime that's in our communities. Wouldn't it be great if the people of 6th Avenue will come together and pray for the educational opportunities in Birmingham? Wouldn't it be marvelous if the people of God would unite our hearts together and say, Lord, how can we reach Birmingham? How can we reach the state of Alabama with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Wouldn't it be mighty? If we would gather together all the people, men and women, the children of God, and the Bible says, and even the little ones. Listen, friends, Jehoshaphat, the second thing is that he remembers what God has already done. Listen what verse 7 says. Did not thou, O our God, drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people of Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? In verse 12, the Bible says, they sought God. In verse 19, the Bible says, they praised God. In verse 20, the Bible says, they put their trust in God. In verse 21, the Bible says, they gave thanks to God. What do you do when you face trials and tribulations, friends. Do you praise God? I mean, some folks will say, you crazy preacher. How do you want me to praise God? Absolutely. God inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, Oh, friends, when when we walk in the valley, when we're not on the mountaintop, that's when the rubber meets the road. Listen, friends, our true character is demonstrated in times of difficulty. Listen, when you're bleeding, who will you call on? Listen, when you're hurting, who will you call on? Do your friends know that you're trusting God, or do they see you falling out like you have no hope? Do they see you moping with your head down low, crying and cussing like a drunk man with no hope in Jesus? Friends, I've come to remind you today that Jehoshaphat prayed. Jehoshaphat remembers what God has already done. But then the third thing is that Jehoshaphat believed what God will do. Oh, yes, yes, friends, I've come to say to you today that these verses are written in the future tense. These are God's words of promises. Faith listens to the word of God. Listen what the Bible says in verse 12. The Bible says, For we have no might against this great multitude that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Listen what the Bible says in verse 15. The Bible says, Fear ye not. Neither be dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. But God, listen to what the Bible says in verse 17. Listen, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, get ready, position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Friends, I've come to say to you today that the Word of God is true. The Word of God is faithful. He still speaks peace to our souls. He directs us. He guides us. He delivers us. He leads us. He knows us. He cares about us. Stand still and see the salvation of God. 
Oh, friends, I've come to say to you as I, I prepare to close, the Bible says, I am with you oh, yeah, yeah. always. Not some of the ways, not sometimes, but I am with you always, oh, yeah. even to the ends of the world. Listen, the Bible says in Mark, the 13th chapter, he said that his word shall not pass away. Friends, when you read the Word, when you study the Word, when you meditate on the Word of God, the Bible says that the Word of God will not return void. Listen what the Bible says in Matthew, the 11th chapter. Come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Are you weary? Are you burdened this morning? God says, come to me. If you're heavy burden, and I will give you rest. The Bible says in Proverbs, the third chapter, trust in the Lord oh, yeah. with all your heart. Oh, yeah. Lean not to your own understanding, but in everything. Yes, in everything. Yeah. Lean not unto your own understanding. The Word of God says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What do you want this morning? Yes, what do you want this morning? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen, the Word of God says, be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything, but let your request be made known unto God. Friends, are you weary this morning? Are you questioning the God of your salvation? Listen, the Word of God says, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in Jesus. The Word of God says this morning, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that if Roosevelt believes in him, Roosevelt shall have life, an everlasting life in the Lord Jesus Christ. I submit to you, friends, today that some of us, if not all of us, have received the mercy, the kindness of God. But not only have we received that kindness, not only have we received the mercy of God, but God has allowed the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. But what will you do? What will you and I do? After we received all the mercy, the kindnesses of the Lord and Savior that we call Jesus. Some of you have received the mercy of God. Some of you have received the mercies of God. And some of you still have not responded to God through faith in Jesus. I've come to say to you on this Sunday morning that as we stand still in the presence of God, we believe that God can save you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What will your decision be today? Will it be another day that you will walk away and say, I'm just going to put it off? But will you declare Christ as your Lord and Savior? Will you declare him as the Savior of the world? Stand still. I don't know if I told you, but I told our staff some more than almost 22 years ago. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed for my daddy to come to know Jesus. And right at Christmas time, my daddy walked out. 70 plus years and gave his heart to Jesus. <laughs> Friends, I've come to say to you that God, if he can do anything like he did with my daddy, he can do it with you. He can do it with me. He can do it with anyone. In spite of our sins, God saves. Will you give your heart to Jesus today? Who will it be? Up from your seat, we're ready to walk with you. We're ready to grow with you as you give your hearts to Jesus. As we stand together 
If you're here this morning and you want to declare Christ as your Savior and Lord, will you come forward and say, Lord, here I am. Save my soul. Will you come?